Moose Ptarmigan Ben had been drinking since noon, on September 15th, until the next June. His claim on both shorelines of Chernigan Creek would be snow-locked for winter. With his pay streak, he would seek succor in his ice prison maroon, with honeypot brandy in the bonfire saloon. A sourdough tall with flakes from his claim, he was paying top dollar to see traveling dames. Not Kitty the Bitch or Maggie the Rag, the local trollops who were paid by the bag. In beds or on tables or upstairs or on floors, well known in the bonfire as resident whores. Moose Ptarmigan Ben wanted a wife who'd share his good fortune for the rest of his life. He was doing quite well on Chernigan Creek, living nose to nose and turning his cheek to those whose gold pans were churning up gray, gravel and stones, and roots in decay. Moose had failed in all he had done since the day of his day of birth in the Florida sun. His orange trees had died on the vine and bull weevils on his cotton dined. He had punched cattle and they had punched back, leaving him with a most painful back. He took a turn with a badge and a gun and made just about enough to run, north where the lure of greater wealth offered him another chance to self. Transform, in this there was reward, for he had no problem working hard. When asked by the others why he joined the rush, Moose pulled his hat low and then quickly cussed that he was just like most other men, who had not to wealth a connection so like a frog on lily pads, he did leap, when the water of failure rose on his feet. Like the very few in the north, he could not afford to trust his whole worth, and his claim and his beans and cabin lot to the mercy of the neighboring sots, who spent their winter frozen in and survived on baked beans and rot gut gin. So he locked himself onto his claim from freeze up till the springtime came, and with a loaded shotgun chaperoned, his 60 feet of frozen loam, but he allowed himself a few doubloons for an infrequent night in the bonfire saloon. It wasn't that Moose was averse to sex or was a monk when it came to the mix of male and female on the occasional whim. Rather, he had understood that he with him, his road in life had a ways to go, and that way did not include grit and snow. Yes, he would drink in the bonfire saloon, but no, he would not howl at the moon until his pouch was as flat as the sandy beach after a storm and tide had its reach. He had only two cares while he was in town, two problems to solve while he was icebound. First were his flakes from deep in the soil, the product of his time, sweat, and moil. For those flakes to make it from his claim to town, he had to make sure he wasn't shot down. Then came the conversion from flakes to dory by a metallurgist, not confiscatory. The finding of gold is child's play to most. If it's there, you'll find it. But if you boast, you're loaded with ingots to the wrong folks you'll end up with a buckshot if not plain broke. So you husband your findings protecting your nut, and most importantly, keep your mouth shut. That was his first step in his passage to wealth, and there still remained one other of stealth. Pancakes of gold that gnome cannot buy, farmland in Kansas and clothes in July. If the sum of the gold cannot leave gnome, and in the lower states find a safe home. The ongoing labors of Marshal Jew Bob was keeping gold safe from those who would rob, be it in town where no gaming was fair, common with marked cards and false millionaires, or on the mud road into Nome under the stair of road agents with shotguns or a winter bear. Next came the step of converting Dory into documentation which would find its way to banking branches in cities and towns, far to the south that were never icebound. He needed a bank with a rock solid link to a rock solid payee, not on the brink, of losing it all by a run on the bank. So through the crowd of keen mountbanks, he started his search for the man of repute, who had the credentials none would dispute. That man was known as Kangaroo Jack, whose Australian bank was always in black. Fortunes are products of luck, sweat, and grit, and the gods favor those who will never quit. But along with a good fortune comes Boogaboo, making the most alluring daydream come true. And it is easy to become to pleasure a slave, but to the successful, it's the money you save. Marshall Jew Bob is from Steve Levi's book, Bonfire Saloon. Bonfire Saloon is available at Author Masterminds, on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and everywhere good books are sold. Bonfire Saloon is a Readers & Writers book club selection.